Snowmobile belts are about as interesting as watching competitive shuffleboard down at the old folks' home. But as far as our sleds are concerned, these things are a critical component. Without them and the CVT transmissions that they make possible, a snowmobile would be a very different machine. So let's face it, the belt is the miracle that makes our world go round. Last year, we went to the factory where Timken Ultimax belts are built in Springfield, Missouri. And one of the coolest things for me in that facility was the fact that the process for building belts has remained basically unchanged, and even some of the machines they're using today were used to build the first snowmobile belts back in the day. Even though the process has remained the same, the materials technology going into today's drive belts are light years ahead of the original designs. And I bet that if the original engineers who were involved back then could see how far sleds have come and the abuse modern drive belts have to take on the sleds we ride today, they wouldn't believe it. Back in the day, 10 horsepower was common, 18 for performance sleds like the Super Olympic. I think we've got more power in the starters on modern engines. Nowadays, some machines are topping 200 horsepower and with modifications that can almost double that. Pure race sleds can pump out even more. And all that power is going through this little cross section of rubber and cord. It's actually a little bit more than just that. The design of the rubber and cord are targeted for the demands of each application and must work together in order to live. Not all belts are created equal, which is the reason you should stick with the recommended belt for your application. A belt designed for a 50 horse machine will not survive long on a sled pushing 180. It's the job of the cord, Aramid cord in the Ultimax belt, to carry the load and transfer the power. It's the job of the rubber to grip the sheaves on the clutches and to make sure that the cords remain perfectly flat. In this condition, a belt can withstand thousands of pounds of pull before a catastrophic failure, which is way more than any sled will ever produce. But if the stress on the cords isn't even across the mall, the most stressed internal cords can break, which will quickly lead to a zipper effect across the belt and failure. Check it out, come here. Somehow, through my superior diagnostic knowledge, I believe the belt is broken. I could be wrong, but I think this is our issue. Looks like it. Not often you can remove a belt through the belly pan, though. That was a good hole. Belt failures that come apart with enough force to exit the belly pan are not always preventable, especially on high horsepower machines, but there's a few things you can do that will at least help prevent an explosion. Number one, if there's any signs of damage on the belt at all, like a burn mark from spinning the drive clutch on a stopped belt, you should change it out. If there's cracks on the rubber down to the root between the ribs, change it out. If the belt looks like it's delaminating at all, change it out. The list doesn't stop there. Mechanical issues like properly adjusted clutches, alignment, engine mounts that aren't broken, and a system that's well maintained will all help with belt life. When it comes to belt life, a belt will always wear naturally with runtime. But if everything checks out with it okay structurally, you can chase the wear down by adjusting the secondary clutch to make up for the reduced width. Just remember to readjust it out when you eventually replace it with a new one. But even then, don't throw that old belt out if it's still relatively good because it can make for a great short-term spare. And by the way, to improve belt life, take it easy for the first few heat cycles to break it in. You can do this by getting it up to operating temperature, that's around 100 degrees Celsius or so, and then letting it cool right off. Two or three heat cycles will season a belt nicely. And pro tip for you, if you have a new spare belt, heat cycle this thing before you need it. That way, if you do have to change it out on a ride, you can start beating on this thing right away. Getting the most out of the life of the belt is always a good idea because these things are not cheap. But if you own an Ultimax belt, there is life after death because Ultimax stands behind their belts with a one-year warranty. 
All you have to do is follow the instructions on the belt sleeve or go directly online to take advantage of the warranty. Online, you'll need to take a couple of photos of the remaining belt to make a claim. Now this is usually enough, but make sure to keep the shrapnel just in case the photos don't do it. If accepted and with prepaid packaging, they'll send a new belt right to your door. When it comes time to choosing your new belt, Ultimax also has a handy belt finder tool on their website. This can be especially helpful when you're cross-referencing from another manufacturer's belt or trying to confirm what the experts at Ultimax recommend for your sled. And it's pretty extensive too, as it has listings all the way back to the 60s. This tool will also recommend one of three belt classes in the Ultimax arsenal as well. These classes are split by horsepower, with belts designed to work best within each respective power level. Beginning with the Ultimax Max belt, it's designed for fan-cooled sleds or liquids up to and including the 500cc class. This would also include vintage sleds that Ultimax has belts for. The Max has had decades of development and has been refined for the best balance of flexibility, grip and dependability for a long life and performance on lower horsepower sleds. The middle power class is served by the Ultimax Pro line. The Pro is designed with a thicker cross section for increased surface contact with the clutch sheaves and the specifically designed fiber loaded rubber throughout the belt will ensure consistent grip over the life of the belt. This translates into cooler operating temperatures and quick acceleration. At the top of the horsepower level is the XS. This belt excels in this category because every aspect of its design has been optimized for high performance and horsepower while at the same time providing excellent belt life in this demanding category. The XS accomplishes this with a rubber compound not found in any other belt on the market, one that's able to withstand the high belt temperatures that go along with high power. The backbone of the XS, like other Ultimax belts, is a band of aramid cord that provides zero stretch in each power class. In addition, details like a top cog design for cord stability and flexibility are found, along with a production process that maintains dimensional accuracy for belts held to a higher tolerance than other brands. This means that an Ultimax belt will work at the absolute peak of performance the OEs design their clutch systems to work at. Plus, you can't forget the experience Ultimax has in the CVT's history in the snowmobile and how that generational knowledge goes into each belt that comes out of the Springfield, Missouri plant. Belts are an awesome thing. They literally make our world go around and without them we'd be dead in the water. Well, maybe snow in our case. Anyways, one last word of advice. Before your next ride, head out to your machine to check to make sure that there's still a spare belt in it and that if you need it, it's in good enough shape to get you home. Also, make sure it's the right belt for your machine. All little details that have burned me in the past.